Yo, KPS guy here. Gonna make a quick video, you guys, about the SVS subwoofer app. This is for the um all three of the new subwoofers that SVS has um, produced. It's the, for the PB four thousand, the PC four thousand, and the um PB sixteen Ultra, as well as their SB boxes as well. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire this, this app here. I just wanna show you guys really quickly about the app. Try keeping in focus here. So the app's really, really cool and it allows you a lot of functionality from the comfort of your sweet spot. So both speakers or all subwoofers um, that were made are Bluetooth compatible. And what you do is simple. You just go onto the device you're going to use your Bluetooth on, just turn on the Bluetooth. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to pair it or anything like that. You just turn on your Bluetooth and then you come to this app. And then the app will allow you to search for your subwoofer. So look for the subwoofers themselves. You don't have to actually go into your... Bluetooth settings of your phone and pair it like you would like a receiver or like a, a car stereo or nothing like that. The app will pair it for you. So once you have it paired, you can use the same app for um, each subwoofer that you have. It will find all the subwoofers that you have connected. And you see here, I have my left one at the top and then my right one right there. I, I named it R-I-T-E because you can only put um, so many characters in, I think 10 maybe. So I couldn't spell the whole word out. Um, so, But I have subwoofer left selected right now. And you can independently go through and make your changes. If I can bring this up. I know it's really bright. Let me see if I can bring the aisle. Uh, it's not going to work. I don't know if I can get you guys to be able to see what I can see. Let me try this. Let me try this. If I can just move this here. That's kind of better. All right, there we go. So you have your menu here. Let me show you guys again if you didn't see it before it was too bright. You have your three dots and lines here at the top right hand corner. You'll come here and you'll have um, a list of things you can go to. So first thing was home and volume, which is the page you're greeted to when you first fire up the app. And then the next thing you have here is a low pass filter. So what this allows you to do is I have it line off because I'm using my receiver, but what you can do is cut off your frequencies. So anything below this number at and below this number, the subwoofer will play anything at this number and higher. It'll um, pass to your floor floor setting speakers, your bookshelves, whatever you have it crossed over to. So I um, it's on 80 by default. I have it off, like I said, I was using the receiver, so there's no need to have two frequency cutoffs because you don't you don't want to have two settings on two different devices. So it's better to use either the app or the receiver. I'm using the receiver in this case, but this is where you would um, come to do that. And if you want to switch to your other subwoofer, just click at the top right there. It connect to your other subwoofer here. At the bottom, it says connecting to the system, please wait. It doesn't really take too long. And there it says, right here, it says connected to subwoofer. Hard for you guys to see. But you're now connected. So now you're on SVS right now. And then you can go ahead and it, you can um, adjust that frequency right there. So if I go to the next menu here, we have phase that's next. Phase allows you to, it says what it says. Phase, you can um, change it between 0 and like 180. So you have a variable phase, not like you have a switch on most subwoofers where you can switch it from 0 to, I think, 180. You're able to pick in between 0 and 180, which is really, really good. Usually, by default, if your subs are in the front of your room next to your mains, you would leave it at 0. But it's, it's something you can play with. Now, polarity. This is um, kind of the same thing as phase, in a way. You have positive and negative. So if you feel like... If you ever have... Um, a bass track on or something you're familiar with and you feel like you're missing some bass check your phase and polarity I know that uh, when I was playing with these yeah I had a lot of bass and low end but when I switched one of these to negative and one of these to positive I lost a lot of sound and why it's because your subwoofers are canceling each other out so if you have a subwoofer that's in phase together so they're both phased together they're moving in and out at the same time the same direction if I was to switch the right one to negative and leave the left one on positive, then you get this. So you're not moving together anymore, right? And so what that's doing is causing standing waves. You're causing your subwoofers to pretty much work hard, but you're not hearing anything. And that's how you can end up thinking your subwoofer is not good. You got to get a new one. Or that's how you um, blow your speakers because you're cranking up the volume and the subwoofers are working the way they're supposed to. But to your ears, you can't hear it because you're getting standing waves. You're missing a lot of frequencies, a lot of frequencies. It's a little bit different than a peak and a null, because in a peak and a null, it's a null in one one spot of the room and a peak in another part of the room. But whenever you have your phase wrong, all parts of the room are going to be canceled out. So, 
just keep that in mind guys play with that if you can next thing they have on here is parametric eq so this allows you to go in and tweak it to your ear how you like your sound to sound you have from 0 to 200 for each subwoofer you're allowed to change the frequency boost that frequency from 0 to 6 db here and then you can change the q factor which is how um slope this line is if you want it to be sh a sharp increase at that one frequency or if you would like it to increase over a more broader amounts of, of, of frequencies here. So I have mine at 0 0.3. I have mine boosted 60 B at 20 Hertz. I just love low notes. So I like them to come a little bit louder than my higher notes. But you see here, I got a 4 dB, 5 dB, 60 B at where I put it at, and then it falls down. But again, I can sharpen that a little bit and make that only at 20. I can kind of pull it into the 25 to 15 range I want to, and so on and so forth. I can also go here. These are my um, EQs. So I can click this one and set it this way. And if I want to have a movie on, I can set it for a movie and then have a third one for maybe a game. So you can have like a music setting, movie setting, a game setting, and have different settings. And you can do the same thing on your other subwoofer. So we change that back to what I had it. Next thing is your room compensation, your room gain compensation. So if you have your subwoofer stuck in a corner, which I do, you're pretty much reinforcing the base. It's like a box within a box. And so you're really adding a lot of extra um, dB to your base which doesn't necessarily sound good. You might think, oh, a little increase in volume. Not quite. You're kind of getting more so of um, some bloominess, some muddiness that really makes your subwoofer sound bad. So if you have a room compensation between 40, I think 20, you can turn the slope from 6 dB, 12 dB, 18 dB, and then 24 dB. I have mine off because I'm not really going to mess with that. I don't have um, like a meter or anything I can really test it to. So I don't want to trust my ear in that because it's really hard to hear what frequency is too loud, but you can kind of guess. But I have mine off. Also, this is on the receiver, so I kind of let my receiver pick and choose. Next thing you have here is port tuning. So if you guys um, have a PB4000, a PB16 Ultra, or a PC4000, you do have three ports that you are allowed to plug with the foam plugs that I showed you guys in previous videos. Um, I'm running mine in extended mode, which means there's one um, plug that's ported. All three ports can be plugged in that sealed mode, and all three are open, and that's um, your normal mode that you come with, with the most output, but not the lowest frequencies. And you can just click here, and you can, can't really see that. I know, here we go, just kind of see it. Standard default mode, all ports open. Extended is one port open, I mean one port plugged, and then sealed mode is all ports plugged. And then, next thing you have is, actually I skipped one, presets here. So like I said, you can have movie music and custom here. And you, you're allowed to pick your own presets however you want it. Right now, mine's on none. I'm not going to run any different configurations depending on what I play or what I watch. I'm not too picky about that because I pretty much do the same thing all the time on the system. But that's that. You can just come and pick your presets. So if you were to click this, you change it to movie, it would go to your settings you had for movie. It automatically saves and remembers those for you. System settings right here. This is where you kind of customize your, your subwoofer to your liking as far as aesthetics go. So auto... This is your auto standby. If you want it to be auto on and off, it detects a signal, it comes on. After a while, it goes off after it doesn't detect a signal. Your default, by default, it's on, so it stays on all the time, which you don't really want because you're taking energy, electricity from your house that you're not even using. And then trigger is when you have your 12 volt trigger coming from your receiver to your subwoofer. And it will go on when your receiver goes on and go off immediately when your receiver goes off. So that's pretty cool. Your display right here, this shows the logo or the volume depending on what you choose or off so there's that front display that's on your um your subwoofers you can change it to say the volume which is what mine's on right now by default it's on it tells you the volume of your speakers you can change it to logo which flashes svs and then the brand of your subwoofer so or the model i should say so if i was to click logo which i just clicked off <laughs> if i click logo what it will do is it will show SVS, and then another screen will come up, will say PB4000. It'll just keep cycling SVS, PB4000, SVS, PB4000. So I have that off because we all know what this is. It's the beast. You can't mistake it for anything else. And um, it kind of distracts you too when you see something blinking in the corner of your eye when you're watching a movie or so. So I leave mine on volume. It just tells me the volume, which is more information than just seeing the logo. Your timeout, which is your 10 seconds. So if I do have this on um, off, what happens here is when I change something on the subwoofer, so if I change the volume or something, it comes on, and for 10 seconds, it'll stay on, show me what I did, and then go off. 10 seconds is the lowest you can have, 60 seconds is the highest. So, and then display lock. So what this, do, oh, sorry, I skipped one. Brightness, you can change 
how bright or how dim you want your logo to be on the PB4000, PC4000, and the PB, also the SBs, with the SBs. So, how bright you want it to be. I have my on the dimmest setting because it gets really bright. <laughs> For some reason, it gets really bright. And then display lock right here. It just keeps it on what it's on. What it, so you can't change any settings or whatever. So on your subwoofer, you can actually see what this actually does. So I keep my, my lock on so that nothing can be changed. And then right here, you can reset to refactory settings. If you mess things up, don't like the way it sounds, you can start from scratch. All that's left here in the settings here is just your SVS support. So it's like a quick access button to call um, SVS and get some support if you need it for any of their products, honestly, not just subwoofers. Tutorial goes through the app for you, kind of like a demo mode. When you first fire up the app before you've logged in to your subwoofers, you get a demo mode. So you kind of go back to the demo mode if you don't know what you're doing, per se. And of course, visit, visit sound, svsound.com. So that takes you to their website. So they give you quick access to them if you need it. And they have really good customer service, guys. So, And then if you want to go back and do the same settings for the other subwoofer, it's simple. Just click that down arrow right there. It loads up the next subwoofer, reconnects to it. Because you did just disconnect from the right subwoofer. Now we're connecting to the left one. So it's really nice, really, really intuitive, guys. So I thought I might show you that for my audience. I'll go ahead and show the app for you guys. Really, really nice. Free app from the Play Store or iOS, whatever you're using. It's on iPads, iPods, iPhones, Android. So really nice app. I've been using it. I've been playing around with it, playing around with it today. So I thought I would show you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see. And k guys out.